Secretary Jerry Oleksiak, and UC Benefits Policy Director Susan Dickinson. I'm Teresa Elliott, Deputy Communications Director for LNI. Please submit your questions by clicking the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. Please include your name and media outlet followed by your question. In the interest of time, you'll be limited to one question, but time permitting, we'll open up the call for a second round. You may submit any follow-up questions to us at dlipress at pa.gov, and we'll address them after the call. For your awareness, this call is being recorded. If you do not consent to being recorded, please hang up now. Following the call, a link to the recording will be provided to the media outlets that participated today. We'll get started with comments from Secretary Jerry Oleksiak. Secretary? Thank you, Teresa. Good afternoon, everyone. We uh, appreciate you joining us for the second time this week. Uh, we uh, wanted to do another call this week because we will not be available for calls next week. So we uh, thought we'd uh, take this opportunity to uh, continue what we've been doing since the beginning of this pandemic, which is uh, sharing information and being as transparent as we possibly can be with uh, with the media. Uh, one of the things I'd like to start with, um, as, as you know, I usually begin with the numbers and I will do that, but we want to point out that uh, we have been uh, looking at our numbers. We've been evaluating our data, our internal data processing uh, related to the pandemic. And we have made some changes. For example, earlier uh, last month, we uh, aligned our numbers to be uh, more consistent with the uh, federal government's numbers. We were reporting different uh, at different times and that uh, created some inconsistency. So we've uh, looked at that. We want to, uh, to let you know that uh, we have found an inconsistency in uh, some of our internal reporting related to the uh, benefit amounts that we've uh, paid. Uh, I want to be very clear about this and very specific that the correction we'll be making and I'll be talking about is only to the data that we compile and share. Nobody has lost any um, uh, benefit dollars. None of the claims or claimants or our programs were impacted. This was a, an internal uh, glitch in our mainframe that we have found and have corrected. That uh, resulting correction will mean that our uh, total amount of regular unemployment compensation claims paid will drop. Uh, you'll hear today I'll, I'll, what I would have normally reported is more than $32 billion will be now more than $23.6 billion. There was a, a glitch in the system where some of the uh, FPUC money that was paid to, that's the extra $600 that was paid to our regular UC claimants was basically being counted twice. And uh, we found that error. We have fixed that error. Uh, as I said, no one, uh, this is an internal uh, uh, issue uh, that we have found that no one has been impacted by this as far as programs or dollars and it also will not impact the trust fund we had talked about last week that we will be um, borrowing from the trust fund this this uh, has nothing to do with that and in fact getting ready for the borrowing is how we we have found this number uh, we have uh, uh, put more checks and controls internal controls in place to make sure that we've got this corrected we'll continue to evaluate uh, what those stats are and how we report them as we have done from the beginning of this. And um, so we can talk more about that as we as we move on. Let me give you the numbers then. Since March 15th, we have, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> we have paid more than $23.7 billion in benefits to our fellow citizens, 4.3 in our regular UC program, $15, uh, $15 billion in the uh, Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Program. That's the extra $600 that ended the week of July, uh, the week that ended July 25th. 4.2 billion in the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program for those not traditionally eligible. 198 million with an M from the PEUC program, the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program. And 16.3 million, again with an M, from uh, Pennsylvania's Extended Benefits Program. So uh, those are the numbers that we have for that. Um, as we have been reporting uh, the percentage number, 94% of our eligible claimants who filed for unemployment between the week of March 15th and July 4th have either been paid or have been determined to not be eligible for benefits. Uh, the remaining 6% are claims that the automated system couldn't approve for various reasons that we have uh, talked about before. and. Uh, they are being individually reviewed 
by our staff, and we do have a, a focus, a priority on getting the older claims done as quickly and as effectively as we possibly can. In order to do that, we've worked, our staff has worked uh, close to 230,000 total overtime hours since March 15th. We have gone from uh, 775 employees in our service centers to our current total of 1,719. Uh, for the month of July, we brought on 452 um, support staff and new employees, and we are working with the uh, uh, governor's office and the budget office to bring in even more staff that will uh, and work being uh, with outside vendors to bring in more staff um, to our call centers. Uh, since March 15th, we've responded to over 700,000 emails, about 334,000 phone calls close to 125,000 live chats, and about 280,000 uh, virtual assistance uh, calls that we have received. And as I have said from the very beginning of this process, uh, we are very proud of those numbers. Uh, the fact that we uh, adjusted the uh, statistics does not mean that our staff has worked any less, any less hard. We have been uh, working diligently to uh, meet the needs of our fellow citizens. And as, as I've said from the beginning, these are not nameless, faceless people to us. These are our friends, our neighbors. Uh, as I'm sure many of you have, we have had, I have had um, friends, relatives uh, impacted by unemployment, impacted by COVID. And uh, we, we take it very seriously. Uh, we need to do what we need to do to make sure that we get those benefits to those people who deserve them. Uh, part of those benefits, of course, have been FPOC, the extra $600, the federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Program, which ended, as I said, uh, the beginning July 25th. Um, Governor Wolf and I have been urging Congress to extend those $600, uh, six, extra $600 in benefits. Uh, it's uh, being hotly contested, hotly debated right now in uh, Washington. Uh, we have reached out to our congressional delegation. The governor has uh, will be has done press conferences, and I'm sure we'll be doing more related to our support for the extra $600 continuing and uh, the need for that to continue. These are these are dollars that are, are uh, going right back into Pennsylvania's economy. They are paying bills uh, that people have to keep food on their table, to keep a, a roof over their heads, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make their car payments. Uh, and we are urging Congress to continue those uh, measures. We uh, are already hearing how uh, difficult it has, has been for people. Um, we are also continuing to work uh, on the fraud issue that we have talked about uh, before. Uh, thus far, we have been able to identify about 4,000 fraudulent claims. Uh, we're partnering with the U.S. Attorney's Office in Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, the PA Treasury, U.S. Bank, other federal agencies um, in an ongoing criminal investigation. And, and again, this is not something that is uh, impacted just uh, labor and industry in Pennsylvania. This is a nationwide pandemic. We're urging people uh, to remain vigilant, to uh, if they have any suspicion that something may be amiss, uh, they should uh, uh, go on our website and they can uh, check uh, not only how to uh, get that fixed, but a list of the warning signs that they, they would find. Um, that website, as, as you know, is dli.pa.gov and any uh, instructions related to fraud will be available there. Uh, and we are continuing, the uh, last thing I'll mention before we turn it over to Susan, we are continuing our virtual town halls. We have had 11 town halls with uh, the public thus far. We'll be doing our 12th one uh, Thursday, August 13th at one o'clock, uh, live streamed at access.live. slash, excuse me, we start that again, access.live slash PA labor or uh, you can call 833-380-0719. Uh, for uh, access to that town hall. Uh, with that being said, I'll turn it over to Susan and then we will be happy to take your questions. Susan. Thank you, good afternoon, everyone. The one thing that I wanted to point out today before we get on to the questions is that we have put a new infographic on our a website, www.uc.pa.gov slash UA. 
Um, and the infographic shows 10 categories of individuals who are not eligible for PUA if they're in that situation. Um, we've been talking a lot about uh, PUA fraud and identity theft related to PUA fraud, but one thing we haven't talked about so far are other potential, potentially fraudulent ways that individuals are filing claims. Um, in some cases, it may be fraud. In other cases, it may just be confusion over who might be eligible for the benefit. So what we did was we put together uh, the top, top 10 uh, type of claims that staff are seeing on PUA where individuals are not eligible based on their situation. And we have it on our website now so that if an individual is in that circumstance, uh, they can refer to the infographic and see, you know, oh, if I'm in this situation, that means I really shouldn't file a claim. Uh, what we're finding is a lot of such individuals are receiving bad information from peers or family who are telling them and urging them to file a claim when uh, really they should not be filing a claim. So the infographic um, explains that if someone is uh, retired with no job offer and no job that they are not eligible. So we're not talking about individuals who retired and are back doing some sort of work, maybe not in their, their field, but you know some sort of work. We're talking about individuals who are fully retired and weren't working and have no intention of working. They are not eligible for PUA. Um, there are the individuals who have not been working at all or did not have a job offer are also not eligible for PUA. So um, not specifically retired individuals, but individuals who uh, you know, perhaps left the workforce for whatever reason, um, they are not eligible for, for benefits. Um, inmates are not eligible. Uh, children are not eligible. Um, individuals who are being paid to file uh, someone else's PUA application. We've seen some of this happening where individuals will advertise that they will file someone's PUA claim for them for a certain amount of money. That is actually illegal and should be reported to authorities when people see that. Um, so we put that note on the infographic as well. Uh, we also have uh, college students who didn't have a job or job offer lined up. Um, if they had a job offer and the job was canceled, that's one thing. But if they didn't have any uh, plans of, of working, they didn't have any job offer yet, then they would not be eligible. Uh, individuals with who are on social security disability and don't have a work attachment would not be eligible. Um, individuals who had traditional employment and could file on a regular UC claim and be eligible, they would um, not be eligible for PUA. They have to go to a regular UC claim. Um, individuals living in a halfway house on lockdown and also landlords. Um, so those are the, the top 10 categories that we're seeing where individuals have PUA claims and should not. So we have that available. Again, our website and the page that that's uh, displayed on right now is www.uc.pa.gov slash PUA. Um, and that's all I was going to share today so we can get to the questions. Thank you for that information, Susan. And before we get started, um, I'd like everyone to please take a look at the bottom of the screen. If your microphone is not muted, can you please mute it at this time? And we will wait one more second because I believe there's one that's not muted and we're hearing a lot of background noise. Okay, we're going to take our first phone um, call today, and we have Justin Schweitzer from PLS Reporter. With about 6% of Pennsylvanians still not receiving their unemployment compensation benefits, what do you advise them to do as they wait for their payments? Just to, to be uh, clear about the 6%, that is 6% in that window that I, uh, I mentioned it goes from uh, beginning of the pandemic, uh, March 15th through July 7th, I believe is the date that I gave. And Susan, you would know uh, for sure, but it, it's that for early week in July. So that's where that 94% figure comes in. Um, and Susan, I'll let you address the rest of that uh, question. Right. The, the makeup of the 6% is a mixture of individuals who may be eligible, individuals who are going to be denied, and individuals who are working part-time too much to qualify for a benefit. Uh, so for those individuals who are um, eventually going to be eligible, um, they would just have to make sure, you know, when we reach out to them, that they are answering the phone, answering our questions, 
uh, one of the thing that this one of the things that the staff are finding is difficult uh, is with you know trying to reach individuals is that they don't answer their phones um, or they don't have voicemail set up so we can't leave them a voicemail saying to call us back if an examiner calls someone and needs information uh, in order to make a decision on their claim they will leave them their uh, extension number so that they're calling the examiner back directly and that's very important because then they don't have to wait through that long queue to get to them they can get through and get their information shared with the examiner and then a determination can be made faster so you know we highly recommend everyone uh, I think we've been saying this throughout the pandemic. We recommend everyone add our phone number to their phone so that they can see if if we are calling them and um, can answer the phone and make sure that they uh, give us the information as quickly as possible. Um, sometimes if we can't get someone by phone, we will simply send them in the mail a questionnaire. So we highly recommend individuals fill out that questionnaire and get it back to us as quickly as possible. Okay, we're going to pause for a moment and see if we have any additional questions. And just a reminder, we are doing this additional call today because we will be unable to do a call on Monday. So if anyone has any additional questions about UC or um, filing UC claims, please submit them at this time. Okay, I guess we're going to have a very quick call today. <laughs> Susan and Jerry, thank you so much. Um, if anyone has any additional questions for our communications office, please email to them at us to us at dlipress at pa.gov, and we will get back to you sometime this afternoon. <laughs>